All right, what's up, guys? We're back here with another movie review, and today we're looking at um, a movie that is probably one of my personal favorite animated movies, and it's directed by Tim Burton and Timur Beck. I'm gonna slaughter this name, Timur Beckamoff. You get what I'm trying to say, but um. Now, this isn't the first time these two directors have done a movie together. I do believe they have done a f quite two or three more movies together than this one. But this is a uh, animated movie, and it's actually not a uh, it's uh, claymation. Not that I mean, it's a uh, computer animated, not claymation. Which is actually odd for uh, Tim Burton because he normally does uh, claymation, like like he did with um. You got Nightmare Before Christmas and Corpse Bride, and Frank and Weenie. Just movies like that, he normally does claymation though, and this one's actually really interesting. Um. Yeah, this is definitely um. And the story is phenomenal. This movie is... It's, it's really underrated. Um, and just before I get into the plot of it, I want to explain... This movie came out around 2008 or 2009. And it's literally just called Nine. And basically, it takes place in this world where so the first scene of the I want to just talk about the movie so the first scene of the movie you see this guy he's narrating in the background of this scene so basically so you're not okay so this guy he's like putting it, putting uh, the last shard of his soul into the doll and basically what this guy did, he put his soul into nine different dolls because the world was being overtaken by machines and eventually man and machine killed each other. And all that was left was the main robot. So these nine dolls have to kill the robot and replenish, replenish life as we know it with their souls. A couple of them have to be sacrificed. It's really interesting topic for a movie and I can tell that creating a movie such as this would take a lot of work in figure out, figuring out the entire story of it because I mean just the story behind this movie is very complex if you really look at it but basically the scene starts off it's the man he he puts the last shard of his soul into the ninth doll, and he dies. When he creates this ninth doll, it's he creates it long after he created the other eight. And um, the ninth doll wakes up, but he can't talk. But he finds this fucking uh, half half sphere thing, and it's got symbols on it. So he takes it with him and um eventually he meets up with uh number two their their names are their names are their numbers so number two is so number nine is kind of like I feel like this is my theory on the movie the different dolls are different personalities of his soul I think in nine is the uh The rational thinking and adventurous part of him. And then two is the kind old man. Because two is like this. He's got this old man personality. And he's very kind. And creative. But then they run into this thing. It's like a giant. Uh, robot with a cat skull for a head. And a giant red eye. It's got like 
a rib cage and shit. It's really weird, but there's this big chase scene that ensues and, um, nine ends up hiding and the thing ends up taken too. And it also takes the, uh, symbol that one nine had because he, uh, dropped it. So then he wanders around a bit and he passes out and he gets spotted by number five. Number five is the engineer side of the doc, the doctor's soul or whatever, the handyman. It's hard to explain. This movie is very complex, but he's like, they're all dolls, by the way. So he picks up nine and he gets yelled at by number one and eight. Number one and eight are the leaders. Number one is like the control side of the scientist. And number eight is the uh, power side of the scientist. It's number eight is like this giant guy, giant doll. And he's got this fucking kitchen knife for a weapon. And, but but he's so small, it looks like I'm a fucking Highlander blade to him. It's fucking crazy. And um, the only other one that we get to meet in this scenario is number six. They believe that number three, four, and um, seven are... Uh, dead but they aren't we get to meet them later but uh number number six is what i like to call the tim burton doll it's this creepy striped doll and he's basically like the schizophrenic uh crazy side of the scientist the madness inside the scientist And then I consider number seven, well, number three and four are twins, and I consider them to be the information and analytical side of the scientist. And then number seven, I believe that to be his bravery. That is just my theory on this movie because I watched this several times. But we get to meet number six, and he's drawing the symbol that was on that half sphere that they found. So then they bring, uh, number five is on board with the plan to, uh, go rescue number two, but one doesn't want to do that because he, I want to go ahead and tell you one's a fucking coward and nobody likes one, but, um, they end up doing it without permission from one because permission, uh, one's like the leader. So they go down there and try to rescue two and they get in a, they find him. They try to break him out, but they get caught by the beast. That's what the thing with the cat skull is. And it chases them around. Uh, eventually it ends up ramming the cage that it was keeping two in and he gets to get out. And then seven shows up to save everybody. And she comes in and cuts this fucking thing's head off and kills it. But then, the one problem I have with this movie. Now, I have no problem with them taking this direction, but again, it was a stupid choice. Number nine reluctantly goes over and decides to find out what happens when he takes this half uh, sphere and shoves it into this socket in the wall that looks like it could fit. Well, that socket in the wall was a piece to the leader robot, which was actually just dormant and needed uh, that little piece to activate it. So, yeah, then the fun starts. So, two jumps over to rescue him from this thing's beam it was turning on, and it zaps uh, two's eyes and mouth and takes his soul away and kills him. So now two is dead. Yes, they killed the uh, nice old man character in like 20 minutes of the film. So then they get back to one. He gets all pissed off and 
the robot overlord uh, creates this vulture looking thing that looks like it's from Transformers 3. And it fucking tries to kill them. Of course it fails. They eventually, there's a big old chase scene and eventually they get to uh, shred it to pieces in a ceiling fan. Which was pretty fun to watch. So then the robot overlord finds out that uh, one of its scouts find out that... So the robot overlord is basically re uh, now active again and it's creating more robots. So it finds out that its vulture is dead so it creates this other thing which I like to call the baby face worm. The baby face worm is this giant worm like creature that has uh, red threads inside of it and it's got two's body on the tail. So half of two's body on the tail and that's used as like a <coughs> hypnotizing beam. And while it's hypnotizing you, it will tie you up with red tie and consume you in its body and then uh, s- basically sacrifice you to the robot overlord in Simba fashion. Very interesting uh, creature. So it ends up, I guess, one. So at this point, we've met three and four and seven. So now we got one. Everybody but two is now at this place. They're, they're at like a church or something. Everybody but two. And I guess they fucking... Uh, they're staying there for a while and they end up uh, running into uh, this worm thing. And the first one to run into it is eight, which actually gets captured by this because there's actually a... Uh, this movie is PG-13 and I don't think it was supposed to be... Uh, gone unnoticed but something i noticed watching that i never noticed it the first few times because when i first watched this i watched it when it came out and i bought it on dvd when i was like 12 but i never noticed it so (coughs) i have been familiar when i was five i stuck a giant industrial magnet up to my uh Oh, fuck. Magnavox TV. And it turned all purple for two years. And even after that, you could still see the rings on the bottom. But, um... So there is a scene right before 8 get ca- eight gets captured. So these dolls have, like, electronic parts inside their head to make their brains work or whatever. The soul helps, too. But he takes this magnet out and he starts rubbing it on his head. And his eyes go all like fuzzy and he starts making moaning sounds. I never figured it out, but I finally figured out. I think I know what he was doing. I think he was using that as like a high or something because I've noticed that the last like seven or eight times I've watched it. I've watched this movie like 200 times. I I shit you not. I love this movie. But, um, maybe it was some kind of erotic act, but it was interesting to watch. And it's not a bad directing choice. It's actually pretty interesting because <laughs> you got a, this entire movie, he's like this big badass that's been chopping up fucking vultures and shit, protecting the group. And he likes to shove rub magnets on the top of his head. It's a hobby of his. So, Eight gets captured while he's trying to get high or something or pleasure himself. And then One almost gets captured, but Seven takes his place and blocks One from getting captured. So they decide to go uh, save them. And once Nine... So the mission is to, if Nine is not out in... 10 minutes or so, they're going to blow the whole place with a can of gasoline. And this will blow up the main robot's factory. So then we uh, get the scene where he goes in there. And as soon as he gets in there, he sees that 8 is being offered up. And 8 is unfortunately taken away and killed. Um, so 8 is now dead. The big badass. 
So then Seven is about to get killed. And also, I need to mention that Seven is a girl. The only girl, though. She is the only girl. But, um... Yeah... So I guess um, Nine comes up with this grand idea and this grand idea involves uh, eventually killing the, uh, I guess this whole, another chase scene ensues and the worm's tail gets caught up in the gears and the gears, unfortunately, well, fortunately, smash the crap out of this worm thing and kill him finally. So then we're left with the robot overlord. They end up getting out of there. And just in time, this fucking barrel rolls down and blows up the entire factory. Then they go up on the hillside to watch the explosion. So they're all laughing, having a good time. And this was actually one of the best scenes in the movie. And this is why this movie is so good. So somewhere, so they end up going over to this like hill place and there's a record player. They play a song on it and it's somewhere over the rainbow and all the background music. I mean, all the background uh, sounds and dialogue cut out and all you can hear is the song. And nine wants to change the music. So he tries to pull out this uh, record and it drops down the hill. They think they've just killed the robot overlord. This thing drops down the hill and he goes to chase it. And, all, and you can't hear anything. You can't hear it, any dialogue, him yelling for the record. You can't hear any anything except for the music. And he runs down there, and out of the fire, what do you see? This giant fucking robot comes out of nowhere, and in the background you hear, Somewhere over the rainbow. It's creepy as shit. <laughs> Imagine watching this at nine years old. I when I first watched this, I was just like, what the hell? <laughs> when I was nine, I wasn't that into horror movies and stuff, but I was just like, that was the creepiest shit to me when I was nine. That was just fucking creepy when I was nine. I'm sorry. That was just, that scene just got me every fucking time. It's just, oh, it's so creepy. <laughs> So this scene involves uh, actually number five getting killed now. So number five has been killed. And they all run. And they run up to this bridge, but the bridge collapses. And the machine manages to grab six before the bridge collapses all the way. And six is unfortunately killed. So... Then we get this long scene where I'm not going to, I'm going to shorten it for you guys. So he goes back to, so he has an argument with one. One wants to kill the thing, but six said something like, you have to take the thing that you put in and out, like the half sphere out and put in, there's like a code. You got to press the three symbols in the right order. And it will release all their souls. And then the souls will release into the atmosphere and create life once again. That was the whole plan all along. They had, a couple of them had to die. I think. This movie is very, the, the plot of it is just so deep. And it, it would take a while to figure out this entire movie. But, so... Nine goes back to the place where he was born and he goes back there and finds this music box, that, uh, video box that he didn't see before. And it tells him the symbols, how to press the symbols, what order to press them in. So he gets back and uh, the others are shooting at this thing with a giant uh, fucking... Uh, giant fucking gun. It's a gun. And they're shooting at it with this, and uh, he tells them the story, and he goes up, and one sacrifices himself so he can get close enough, so one does die here, 
one finally fucking dies because he's such a douchebag. And then we only have the twins, the girl, and him, let Nine, left. So Nine puts in the right coordinates. It kills the fucking robot. It blows up. And, um, yeah, the movie ends with uh, the souls getting released in the atmosphere and life is once again reborn. Okay. We have reviewed Nine. What should I rate this movie? I'd give it an A. A lot of people would disagree with me on that and say that's way too much, but i give it an A. I really like this movie. I give this movie an A. I highly recommend it. This is one of Tim Burton's best works, in my opinion. It, this movie is phenomenal. It's, it's, it's a dead A, okay? It's a dead A. So remember to leave a comment, like, and subscribe.